Hi, I'm Owen from Square Balloon, and today I'm going to do a quick video tutorial on how to tell if you are um, part of a phishing scam. So basically, if somebody is going to um, send you an email with a dodgy link in it, there's a few things you could do to just check if you're safe. They're not totally foolproof, but they're a very good starting point. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is about uh, the structure of URLs. So if you see this uh, URL here, I've got dev.squareballoon.co.uk. So what I want to explain to you is the dev part. The dev part comes before the full stop. So the domain name is squareballoon.co.uk, and it's called a subdomain, which is the dev. And that could be absolutely anything. As long as I own squareballoon.co.uk, which we do obviously, um, we can make the subdomain anything. So potentially, I could do. Um, so I get rid of all the other stuff. Uh, what I could do is I could do paypal.squareballoon.co.uk and some people might see PayPal in the URL and think that's safe but because it comes before the dot um, this dot here that means it's a subdomain and a subdomain can be absolutely anything so I could make it PayPal, Amazon this, I could just call it anything I want but the main thing is it's a part of the squareballoon.co.uk website so that is one of the first things I want to teach you. If I go back to my next page, you can see here that this has got um, an index.php file and then it's got a question mark. And a question mark indicates that there's a query that comes after that. And I've set this website up so you can see the query. And it's basically saying the option is com content. So in this case, it, this website uses something called com content to show content. Uh, and then it's saying there's a view and it's a category. So it's telling it that which view should I use when I load the page, I'll use the category view. And then, so every time there's an and sign, it's giving you another option for the query. So this is and layout equals blog. So it's saying the layout on that page is a blog layout. And then the ID is eight. So the what it's actually asking for is, we're doing a, a category view and the blog layout, but which, uh, which ID number should we use for the category? And the ID, in this case, it's eight which is the blog category um, and then it's saying and the item ID is 112 which is actually the menu item in this case um, but what you can see is all of that information is used by the website to generate this blog view and you can see there's some demo blogs there blog 1, 2, 3, 4 and it's, it's rendered them by knowing that okay I need to lay this layout this view and I need to use this ID to check the category for blogs and now I'm only going to load the content that's in the blogs category <coughs> you don't really need to know that to understand that, but what you do need to understand is that everything after this question mark is a query, and that could be absolutely anything. So if I do paypal.com and hit it, it will load the website. Now, that's fine because this website doesn't look anything like PayPal, but if I was a scammer, I could generate a website that did look exactly like PayPal, and you may be fooled into thinking, because it's got paypal.com at the end, that this is a PayPal website. So if you remember I said that everything that comes before the dot is a subdomain, so if it's there, you can disregard it because it could be absolutely anything, including paypal.com if we want it to. Um, and then we look at after the dot, uh, and don't forget you could have many dots, so you could have this sort of thing, and it wouldn't always be the same, the scammers are smarter than that, um, but it would sometimes be lots and lots and lots of subdomains, and that ends up being very confusing for you to try and work out which the domain which domain it really is and so it's the last dot you want and then um, then the domain name so when I say the last dot obviously there's dot com we ignore that that's the extension dot co dot uk there's two dots there but we ignore that because we know dot co uk is a real thing obviously other countries have different ones dot us and things like that <coughs> excuse me um, but the important thing to know is that after um, after the slash is now it's sort of like the inner workings of the site um, so .php is not a domain name it's a file type um, and I know this is getting a bit complicated but the important thing I want to tell you is after the question mark is a query so even if the last thing you see in the last dot is paypal.com it's not a paypal.com website because it's a question mark so next thing uh, that you need to worry about is uh, things like this. This looks like it's paypal.com, but in fact what I've done is I've used a capital I, 
instead of an L. So if I do the L there, you can see it's very, very difficult to tell the difference between them. In fact, I wouldn't be able to. So there are things like this, and in fact, there are a lot of um, foreign languages with different characters that look exactly the same as an O, or perhaps an O with two dots above it, which are very discreet, and you might not notice it straight away, and sometimes look pretty identical, like in this case as well. So uh, it's another thing to be aware of. So if I see if this loads, I don't know if anyone's got this website. They haven't, so that's good. But you can see it's converted it to lowercase in this instance. But however, in an email, when you hover over it, it may show the capital, um, which is a problem. This has now converted it to paypi.com, um, which is great that it's not an actual website. But if you look in the URL, you can easily sell now that this is a lowercase i. <coughs> that will help you out. But if you notice anything anything unusual about an email, just question it. I would be very, very cautious about opening any attachments in emails if you don't know where they're from. It may appear to be from an accounts department and it may appear to have an invoice attached as a PDF. But potentially, <coughs> potentially it's um, a HTML document or something different which could be malicious. So certainly question things as much as you can. You can also install software, antivirus software sometimes comes with an email scanner which will help you to work that out. Um, but to be honest with you, my main message is to be vigilant and think about things before you do them. If you're at all worried, ask another person for an opinion or um, call the company. If you know that you owe them an invoice but you don't think this is them, give them a call and ask them if they sent the email. It's one of the easiest ways to check. My employee just got uh, an email recently saying that it was from me and uh, asking them can you just quickly do this task or something like that seems innocuous at first but um, she quickly noticed that the way it was worded wouldn't be someone like me wouldn't have asked it plus I sit next to her so I'd have just asked her um, but it's a very unusual request so she questioned it and then it turned out to be a phishing email uh, all these guys want to do is get you to give them passwords to things uh, like PayPal um, potentially give you access to um, if they get your password a lot of people use the pa same password for many websites if they get your password for one <coughs> potentially they can access all of the other websites by just trying your email and password combination it's automated it's a bot it will just go out and just try thousands of websites straight away and if a login works then they're going to do as much as they can in terms of maximizing uh, whatever they can get out of it whether it's taking money potentially stealing data such as email addresses, client names, potentially uploading things to your website. So uh, it's very useful to have links from your website to their website. And usually they would not put this on the home page because you would notice it quite quickly. Normally they would make a web page somewhere on the website that you wouldn't immediately notice, which has a link to their page. If you had a client before, their website had a PayPal page, uh, not a real one, obviously a fake one, uploaded to their website and it was very very scary for the client the host uh, realized that that was happening and the host turned, uh, took the website down straight away um, to stop people from getting scammed but obviously there's a, a business cost to that that the website is now offline and somebody has to come and find out how the hack was made did they get a password access or did they find a, a hole in the security um, and the way they would do that normally is just by using a bot again to just poke 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 does this work does this work does this work running scripts and eventually um, get access to a website if it's got an outdated bit of software or something um, and then they can upload these pages or something like that so just be vigilant when it comes to clicking links the easiest thing to do when you see a link in a website or in an email is to hover over it and it will show you the real link whereas it may be a button or something um, which may not immediately give you the information you need but if you hover on it you should see the real link come up and just be very very vigilant um, when you're doing that so I hope this helps you to understand how phishing works and the things you can do to take action to be a bit more cautious with it but if you do have any questions please do contact us through the website and we'll put you in touch with uh, an excellent IT company that can help you um, and if you have any more questions about this please put it in the comments and we'll release another video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe